This is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the highest cause of mini split failure, and that's with the electrical control boards failing due to the power supplies, electrical surges, or over voltage or under voltage. And so we're going to be installing the Cool Guard 2 in order to handle this, and we're going to be explaining how it works coming up. So you see we have our Cool Guard 2 already installed. I'm going to show you the full installation of this, but basically it's acting like a safety switch and it's monitoring both legs of power. So this is 240 volts and you have it going through the Cool Guard 2 in series to your mini split and it's going to be protecting this mini split from any low voltage. So anytime that one of the two legs goes lower than 104 volts, it's going to shut off both legs going to the mini split or if it goes any higher than 130 volts on one of the two legs, once again, it's going to act as a safety switch and shut off power to the mini split. It's also going to guard against any electrical surges that may occur in order to protect that unit. An electrical power supply problem to the building could occur at the electrical substation. It could happen at the transformer, at the pole. You could have a car crash down the road and that could affect it, or you could have a lightning strike down the road and that would affect the, the building and the, the power, you could have an electrical surge, or you could have a high voltage problem maybe due to the transformer. You could have a low voltage electrical problem due to high electrical resistance at the lugs behind your meter socket. So the whole point of the Cool Guard 2 is it's gonna monitor for high voltage or low voltage on both legs of the electrical circuit, and it's going to act as a safety switch to cut off power to your mini split if there's a problem. And it's also going to protect that system against any electrical surges. So now we're gonna go ahead and install this. So first things first, we've turned the power off to the breaker box and we've removed our cover plate and we're going to be measuring for voltage. As you can see, this is our wire from our breaker box coming through the wall. So we're going to measure from one leg to the other and we measure zero volts and then we're going to measure from one to the ground for safety and we have zero volts again and zero volts. So we're good to go there and now we're going to go ahead and mount this to the wall. We're going to disconnect these electrical wires that are going to the mini split unit and we're going to actually move this electrical conduit over to the cool guard too. So we're going to also need to cut the conduit down as well. So because this has crimp connectors in here, we're gonna just gonna leave that all connected. And so what we wanna do is we wanna dry fit this electrical conduit and we're gonna to need to cut that down. And so we're gonna go right about there. And so I'm gonna Sharpie mark it first. And I'm gonna pull this conduit out and cut it without the electrical wires inside. So the only reason I took this off was just to show you that, what the electrical connections look like. We have one power wire on L1, L2, and then we have our ground. And so we're gonna put this cover plate back on and then we're gonna run this up into our cool guard too. We also need to reinstall these pieces here.
This mini split has a max fuse of 15 amps, and that's why these fuses right here are for a 15 amp. So I don't know if you can see that or not. But we have a larger gauge size coming into the disconnect, but we're only using 12 gauge to go from the disconnect to the cool guard two, and then once again the 12 gauge from here to the outdoor unit. So now we're gonna cut this down to size and run our wiring from here to here. Here we have a Torx screwdriver that we're going to set to 25 inch pounds and then we're going to tighten these wires into the lugs. Now that we have this wired in, I just want to point out that we have our disconnect right here is how we would turn the power off to this unit and the mini split unit. And this is in series with the, the power wires going from the disconnect to the outdoor unit. Now normally you're going to notice these are installed. So this is a surge protector, but this is wired in parallel. So this is not going to break the electrical circuit to the outdoor unit. So just say this represented the the power coming into the disconnect, this is the power going out, this, this type is actually wired in parallel. But the Cool Guard 2, because it's wired in series, it's able to break the power wires going to the outdoor unit if there's a voltage problem. So now we're going to go ahead and put the cover on and we're going to go ahead and test this unit out. So our cover has a rubber gasket right here, so we're just going to go ahead and mount that on. Now we're gonna turn the, the breaker on inside and then we're gonna turn this disconnect to the on position. So as you can see, because we have flashing lights, we are gonna look at the B right down here. And that means that the condition is normal, but it's delayed, meaning that we're gonna need to take three minutes before we're gonna get power to this unit. So anytime there's a interruption in power, this unit is going to monitor the power for three minutes and then it's going to be checking it to make sure that the voltage is correct before it's going to allow power to the outdoor unit. So now that it's been three minutes, we have green solid LED lights lit. That means that the condition is normal and on. So anytime that our mini split's calling for air conditioning or heat to turn on, it's going to be able to run. 
while also being protected by our cool guard too for any voltage irregularities or any surges. Now let's look at a couple scenarios where we have under voltage and over voltage. We want to show what's happening with our cool guard too as far as it being able to protect our mini split unit. So you see we have one multimeter on the left of our cool guard two and that's measuring our input voltage and it's actually only measuring one of the two legs. Our multimeter on the right is measuring our output voltage and once again it's only measuring one of the two legs because I want to show you our over voltage and our under voltage. So scenario one is over voltage and you can see our voltage is rising up to about 130 volts before the cool guard 2 is opening up the electrical circuit. Now you see the multimeter on the right is measuring zero volts. So now we're going to move our one probe from the ground to the other hot leg so that we can measure from hot to hot and you see we're still measuring zero volts instead of 240 volts so even if you have one of the two legs being over voltage or under voltage it's going to break the electrical circuit for both of the hots. Now our over voltage scenario is done and we have 121 volts as our input voltage into the cool guard 2 and you see that both the right and the left LED lights are green and they're flashing so that means we're on our three minute delay before it's going to allow power on the output terminals that are going to our mini split. Now that the three minutes are up our two green LED lights are solid and that means that the condition is normal and the output voltage going to the mini split is measuring 119 volts. Now we're going to move on to our low voltage scenario. Now you see our scenario two our input voltage is lowering and it's going to cut out at about 104 volts as you can see now our red LED light is flashing and it's telling us that we have a problem on line one so now the multimeter on the right is measuring zero volts and if we were to measure across both hots instead of a hot in the ground you still see that we're measuring about zero volts once the voltage is corrected at 121 volts the two LED lights are flashing green and it's during its three minute delay while it's monitoring the voltage. Then once they turn solid green, we're then going to get power to our mini split again. You see our one leg's measuring 119 volts and we would measure 240 volts roughly going to the mini split unit. So that's it. If you want to learn more about the Cool Guard 2, you can check out links down in the description section below. We also have some, some videos down there as well on mini split installation and service procedures. We also have articles on mini split systems over at ecservicetech.com so you can learn all about them there. We also have some other free resources there such as our calculators, our quizzes, our quick tips, the podcast. So make sure to check all those out as well as our refrigerant charting and service procedures for air conditioning book. So that's all over at acservicetech.com, and hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.